Dean Solomon, as I welcome Glenn Archer to the program. Arch, 10 That's years right. or so ago, maybe a little bit longer, those sorts of incidents, while we never condoned, they were much more commonplace, but not anymore. No doubt, yeah, like 10 years ago you probably saw one every weekend, but these days you just can't do it. I mean, you can't have a look at this hit on Cameron Ling by Dean Solomon without wincing. There's no doubt about it, and I don't think anyone in the footy world condones it, but gee whiz, from the moment he did that, Dean Solomon, he knew he, that he had become enemy number one around the country, and uh, I'm pretty sure he realised it about now, probably, two or three seconds after it. And, uh, well, he's going to be out for three or four weeks, Cameron Ling, one of the love players of the competition. Keep going. Be pardon? Three or four weeks. No, Cameron Ling is oh, going sorry. to be out for three or four weeks, Hutchie. Solomon. Now you can get into Solomon because you've been <laughs> waiting back. You, you want to give him life? No. But well, you want to give him a psychologist? No. Psychologist for him, do you think, Calm Karen? down for a minute. Well, I think the tribunal will be making the decision, Gaz, and um, it could be life if, he's, if this is his last season. Yeah, well, I mean, that's another a point. but uh, It has to be double the, the consequence for Ling. It has to be at least eight weeks. I don't think there's any doubt that his season's over. It could be higher. I mean, repeat offender... Not of that magnitude, but a significant tribunal record. The club's a repeat offender at the tribunals. A terrible record. Shocking incident. Uh, calculated. And yeah, uh, while you, he's can't, a you cannot say that was calculated. Do you think he meant this? Do you think he went out There's there and no thought, I'm going to get Cameron Lee? There's no doubt he went to clean him up. But if you look at the what he actually turns his head at the last minute and then raises his elbow. He isn't gone into that oh, you're kidding, saying, aren't you? I'm going to elbow him in the cheekbone and break his face. There's well, no way in the world. For, for a player to stand up at the end of a game and describe it as one of the lowest points in his AFL career yeah. and say that he's truly sorry, he must have known that there was more to it than just an accident. He knew straight after the event. He knew as soon as, as, soon as that contact with his elbow, he thought, oh, no, what Glenn, I, I know you have this great empathy for hot-headed people, right? And you just can relate to anyone that just does, the, does a head gasket in yeah, the middle of the right. game. Yep. But it was uncalled for. He had plenty of opportunity to avoid that contact. He was the first to admit it and they should throw the book at him. Oh, I've got no doubt. It was uncalled for, and I'm not trying to condone it either. All I'm well, saying... it sounds like you are. I I've mean, you, you I've, defend I've, Barry Hall, you defend Because I've been Dean in the Solomon. situation before you haven't. And when you run out of plan and say, I'm going I'm to clean him up, you, you say you're going to clean him up down the middle. You never go into a situation like that with the Does intention to elbow him Does it get worse as you get older and, no and struggle more? Does it Does get it? hard? Do you do it? You're more likely to do it as you get older and your team's struggling. Yeah, maybe that might be a good point because you probably slow down a little bit and you probably don't get to the contest quick enough. So well, how maybe. many how many weeks would you give him then? I'd give him six. I don't think it was as bad as what Barry Hall did. Um, I know he's got. He had more time to consider his actions than Barry Hall did. Well, he did have plenty of time uh, after the game to consider his actions as well. And this is what Dean Solomon had to say, almost unprecedented, straight after a game. I want to apologise to Cameron Ling and the Geelong Football Club for my incident today. Um, I feel terrible. It's probably one of the lowest points in my career. Um, it's unacceptable and I want to apologise, uh, yeah, as I said to Cameron and the Geelong Football Club, I don't want this to benefit me in any way. Um, I deserve my penalty, whatever that will be, um, but I do want to po apologise to, to Cameron, so thanks guys. Now, I've heard that criticised as well, Dean Solomon, that he was trying to uh, lighten the sentence. Well, it's hard to criticise that. I that, think that, that was sincere. Very admirable. I think Dean Solomon made a horrible blue on the weekend. It was uncalled for, unwarranted. It was ugly. He's put his hand up for it. I don't think we need to hang him anymore. He'll no, right and Glenn's way. right. I don't think it was as bad as a Barry Hall one. Not nearly no. as bad. Because although, although the ramifications were worse for the other player, it wasn't as nearly so much behind the play. It wasn't a king hit, which I reckon Barry Hall's was. Yeah, we'll exactly. see Daniel Kerr, uh, his incident, maybe a little later, and arguably that could be seen to be his, uh, yep. worse. How much, just on that, though, how much responsibility a free man are going to take for this? I mean, it was, it was terrific that he faced the music, and we, know, we all know Dean, and he's a very good person. Mm. But free men are repeat offenders at this. I mean, this is a footy club that's won two games. They've got a long list of tribunal problems over the last two years. They, they were borderline thuggish on the weekend in different parts of the game. They're playing players that are uh, outdated. I mean, this footy club is Season three mantle observers said to me today that, that even by their standards, it was a shocker that first quarter against Geelong. An absolute shocker. Well, they lo it looked like they had intent. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They've come across the country. They're playing horrible footy. They're up against a very formidable side. Ryan Crowley got into Gary Ablett in the first time they played them. They only went down by... Uh, I forgot what the margin one point. was. One point. So that was their intent. Now, uh, he obviously overstepped the line as well, Crowley, because he's been given a week uh, on Gary Ablett. They were always going to get in there in their space. I mean, they, if they weren't if they weren't trying to play physical, then there's every chance they may have lost by over 100. I don't necessarily hold them accountable for the way they played. They'd probably overstepped the line, and that is indicative of the season they're having. But they had to try and make a stand, didn't they? 
yeah, physical but, stand. They did, but surely you'd learn something from the Port Adelaide game when Port Adelaide went down there and tried to do the same thing mm. and got absolutely flogged. Have What's a look that? at the, have I, a look at the Collingwood game, and that's how you play against them. You, you tackle them, you don't go whack them. I, I reckon Crowley thought to himself, I played on Abbott in the first round and had as much success as anyone else has in the competition, so I'm, I'm going to play that same way again. I don't blame him. You, I'd blame him for that because that's stupid and you'll play the consequence, but he was always going to try and get in Abbott's face. I think Mark Harvey's under an enormous amount of pressure. Interesting, we've had both Mark Harvey and and Mark Thompson in here this year. They've talked about how they've supported each other as former teammates. Don't reckon there'd be much support for Mark Harvey this weekend after that game from anyone at Geelong. No. And well, I think the change of CEO and various other changes at the club might just help Mark Harvey keep his job even for next year. Because he's had a shocker. I can't make the eight. No. What was there to achieve by trying to, to go aggressive against Geelong like that? They have an opportunity. They brought Farmer back into the side, which was extraordinary in the first place. They've got to put some young kids in and be done with it. Here's what Tom Harley said on the weekend. That's pretty. That's really cheap and pretty old school stuff. Now, that, those comments from Harley didn't sit well with some people, Gaz. No, that, I mean, you don't often see players come out and say that, but maybe they'll move to the point where they wanted to. I mean, it's changed a lot, footy. I mean, and players are much more outspoken. Tom Harley's a statesman of the competition now. He speaks on a lot of a whole he, range he, of he's issues. He's another former Essendon bloke, Robert And this was Shaw. Robert Shaw's respi- uh, reply, rather. At least we were prepared to take on the men, not a kid just out of the under-18s. Now, uh, I'm What's not, he referring I'm, to there, Reese Palmer? Well, apparently, I, this is the Reese Palmer with Cameron Mooney. Um, now, Mooney, was, that was looked at, that incident, just uh, on the ground there with Reese Palmer and Chapman, I think, comes over the top. Got no case to answer, Cam Mooney, and uh, that was Jimmy Bartell. That was looked at with no case to answer, and he's probably Jimmy Bartell's missed suspension by about you know a foot there. So you've got to be a little bit careful. But um, it's interesting the war of words that broke out between the two sides. You've got Mark Thompson, a great Essendon, ex Essendon man, and Robert Shaw and Mark Harvey, who are two great Essendon men. So it's a different world we live in, Arch. Not often you hear players come out and criticise the way a team plays, and not often you hear a footy manager have a crack. And I think Neil Baum said today that Robert Shaw would regret those comments. So it'll be a feeling between. Between the two teams? Oh, a lot of feeling between the two teams. And some fallout for